Good morning, it's Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, From Eternity to Eternity, and our scripture is Isaiah chapter 43. Bring out the people who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. Gather the nations together, assemble the peoples of the world. Which of their idols has ever foretold such things? Which can predict what will happen tomorrow? Where are the witnesses of such predictions? Who can verify that they spoke the truth? But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been, and there never will be. I, yes, I am the Lord, and there is no other Savior. First I predicted your rescue. Then I saved you and proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. The prophet is taking his beloved kinsmen to task, as most prophets did. Their history was unmistakably orchestrated by the sovereign will of Jehovah, creator of the universe and all it holds. Yet they had somehow forgotten that and taken the seemingly more convenient approach of accepting their neighbor's gods. It was, quote-unquote, convenient in the sense of going along to get along. It's easier in the short run to surrender truth to those who only believe what denies the facts. But in the long run, you eventually run into God, specifically the one true living God. Everything else is an idol. Isaiah reminded Israel they were supposed to be faith-believing witnesses of the God who stretches from eternity past through eternity present and into eternity future. There is no time when God did not exist or rule the universe, and that includes forever as well as today. So the question for Israel, for us, for anyone is, when does it ever make sense to trust in anyone but God? Consider this picture. A seven-year-old boy is delivered from his mother's womb. She and the dad fed and diapered and loved him. They trained him to walk and talk. They taught him to act like a human sort of. One day, the dad took his son to work with him at the nuclear reactor energy plant. He showed him all the dials and levers and gauges and control panels that run the place. He showed the boy how when he flipped a switch, things buzzed and moved and either turned on or off. He even let his son get in on the fun, allowing him to flip one switch that returned electricity to a neighborhood that had been powerless due to a storm. The emergency crew had finished their repairs and the boy was permitted to flip the switch and voila, there was light. Well, as seven-year-olds are wont, the young man decided he wanted more of a good thing. If it was fun to press one switch that turned on thousands of lights, there must be plenty more where that came from. So, in his newfound joy of turning dials, switches, handles, and control panel buttons, he began running around touching everything. Now, I don't need to carry this imagined scenario any further. A seven-year-old turned loose near the controls of a nuclear reactor is a tragedy just waiting to be written, assuming, of course, anyone lives through the day. Imagine Israel as that little boy, favored by their father Jehovah, an heir to the power of the universe, far superseding anything man-made such as a little nuclear energy plant. This is what Isaiah saw, an heir of universal greatness running around in juvenile playtime instead of growing up to boldly proclaim the name of Yahweh to the nations. Like the little boy in the imaginary tale of going to work with Daddy, Israel had grown bored with just pushing buttons as instructed. I can just hear the words, Okay, Dad, I got it from here. That is the condition of our world today. God is largely ignored, and we human children are pressing as many buttons as our pudgy little fingers can reach. 
Someday, we will press the wrong button. Not the nuclear annihilation one connected to all those bombs, but the one that crosses the line, the much more important line of God's patience. For you today, if Yahweh was God before the beginning and he'll be God after whatever ending we humans engineer, it's safe to assume he's God right now. What further call do we need to worship him at this and every moment? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.